Hello and welcome to Travels with Jordy. For those of you following along, yes, we're deeply embroiled in rebuilding the steering on the boat, and yes, it's taking forever. But the good news is, next week we're moving on to carpentry. Fun carpentry, I promise. Hello and welcome to Travels with Jordy. My name is Peter, and this good-looking fellow here is Jordy and we live together on this wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia all the while fixing it up for some pretty extensive cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing you might be interested in please consider sticking around and subscribing we'd love to have you. I'd also really like to take the opportunity to thank my patrons whom without I really wouldn't have the ability to do this every week. Thank you all so much. And for those of you who like to win a Travels with Jordy t-shirt stick around to the end of the episode and I'll show you how you can do that. Cheers! Let's get on with it. But in the meantime, we do have a bit more to do with this steering, and I'm going to try and condense it as much as I can. In fact, I have a special technique for that I'll tell you about at the end of the episode. Swing that down. Keeps tension on it. And we can redo this. Ah, that one. There we go. Okay. I don't know if everyone knows that about these electric planes, at least the Makita versions, they have a little channel on the front uh, to make it very easy to do a quarter inch chamfer. So tidy. There we go. It's just a block of wood, but it's a little nicer. Let's give this the same treatment. Okay, and which side's prettier? Oh, I don't know. It's really hard to say. This side, I let's say. Very nice. So that'll go like that. This will go like that. Right about there. And this will go right about like that. Okay, seems all my Gorilla Glue is hardening up. Even this one is about had it. Anyway, let's squeeze a little of this out. Equal spacing all around. So Beauty! Okay, now the rest I can do without having to worry about it falling out of alignment. That's getting hot. never coming apart. Okay, that done, let's locate the helm. About there. Roughly there. One and an eight. Good. Okay, let's go line this up. Just a matter of holding this in position. And that's pretty darn close. So I'm just going to scribe this against the bulkhead. And then I know where I can put the holes for the screws from the inside. Huh! Excellent! That's heavy! And by the magic of having someone here at the marina to hold this in place, I've now screwed it from the back side and it is solid. So all i got to do now is reaffix the helm. Bloody thing is heavy! That's enough, you don't need to watch this. And here we go, the final two shivs. So we start at the sprocket, work our way down uh, to this one here, which is really just to pull it out of the way so that I can have some storage underneath the helm and the one that sends it across underneath the sole. Okay, so the sprocket being, the helm being the fixed point, I'm going to do this one first and I've just roughed them out so I just need to find if it's relatively close before I start to get any closer. I need to move the strings backwards, if I line myself right up here, aft about a quarter of an inch to average them out. Okay, so having repositioned this shiv, um, it's now center lined perfectly with the sprocket above. Now it's a matter of getting the alignment right. I have uh, a misalignment here. I'd like this to be perfectly parallel with that string. But that has to be tipped over as well. So, pretty easy to tell. The block has to swing outward, in other words, extend this screw, shorten this one. Let's get on with that. Okay, a little more tweaking, and I can see that I have really great alignment in both directions now. And so that block is in the right place. Now I'll show you what I do. Okay, so now I just scribe the block 
to the stringer um, so that I can carve the back of it parallel to the face of the stringer and when I screw it back on it sits flat. Now I can tell you right now this is a very extreme carving because the stringer is tipped outwards, the block is tipped quite a bit inwards, there's a lot to trim here. So right from there right to there. Vertically it'll be here and the bottom side is going to take it all off, all the way. Alright then, because this block is going to require such a severe, in fact it's going to come through the face trimming here, I've opted to make another block which is the same dimensions here, but now when I carve it I will have enough material left so that it won't come to nothing. So I'm just going to make this block up, transfer the scribe to it and uh, see how it fits. Okay, this isn't precarious at all. Okay, there we go, and prettied up with the chamfers. Let's see how well that fits. Okay, that is it. That is absolutely it. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with that. The fact that it lined up perfectly with the top of the stringer, I, I, I actually really, really like this. Okay, let's look at the lower one here. I would say, my gosh, that's pretty close. It's off by a hair, but I can easily take that into account. And in the other direction, it's basically right on. So this one's a pretty easy scribe because it's not that severe. So I can actually just use the pen sideways here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stop about there because I'm pretty close and uh, I'm going to do a retest fit. Okay, so pleased. We're all done. We have perfect alignment right through the system. Okay, so now the beginning of the calculation for how long to make the cables. Well, pretty straightforward. All I got to do is put a piece of tape on this piece of string. Seems too easy, but it's the case. So I just measure halfway between the center lines of both of these and it's 22 inches. So at 11 inches and I cut it right there. Alright, so I've marked here, it's actually going to be between the two marks, just so that I can tell when I cut this off whether it's going to have to fold over. Anyway, never mind for that. <laughs> this is marked here, I've marked underneath the bed, offset by 24 inches, and I've marked at the quadrant. And so I'm now going to cut the, the string at the quadrant and pull it all back through. Okay, it seems very strange to pull this all through now that it's gone slack, but anyway. Let's do one at a time. So, through it comes. This mark here is where I'm going to put the um, splice underneath the bed. And this mark here is where I'm going to attach it to the quadrant. And now the other one. There we go. And the bulk of the remaining work is to make up the cables, the individual cables out of wire rope. Now I've showed you that I've measured them all by marking and cutting to length the original string that I'd run through the system. Now I just have to transfer that to wire rope, put some thimbles on the end and connect it all back up again. Okay, so it's the first nice day in weeks, although it is a bit windy, so I'm going to apologize in advance for wind noise on the camera, although I've made a little muff for it, but we'll see. Anyway, so I'm going to work out here, basically, I'm going to work along the edge of the dock here, and I'm going to stretch out the string that I took out of the steering system and use it as a measurement to make up the new cables. Let, let's just get started, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay then, so I'm going to take the first mark here and I'm going to make a knot in it at this point uh, relatively accurately. <laughs> um, but again, I have a turnbuckle to uh, look after all that for me. So that's very close to where that end of that cable will be. So I'm going to string the string down along the dock now and tie the other mark to another screw which will give me two relatively robust screws in this edge of the dock here for me to lay out the cable because working with string is difficult. Working with wire rope when you're trying to put it through the thimble and everything and keep the length consistent is a little more complex. Okay now without making it too complicated the length of the string is actually not the length of the stainless steel wire rope I need because of course I have the turnbuckles and I have a few other 
fittings in the line. I won't get into all the details of that for now, but in other words, the wire rope length needs to be 16 inches shorter than the actual string, but only in one of them because the total discount is applied to one of the strings, but there's actually four cables, one from the helm to the connection where the upstairs helm will meet, and then from there to the quadrant. And I'm taking all of the correction out of the first cable. Never mind all that. This particular cable gets to be 16 inches shorter. Takes us right there. Okay, here we go. Here's the wire rope stretched down. I've already put a um, eyelet on the other end, on the other screw. So basically, it's got to have a new eyelet. Basically, one of these right there around this screw. But of course, the wire rope has to fold around that, and I've determined it wants about four inches. So if I measure off four additional inches from here, it puts me right here. And I'm going to mark that with tape. This does a couple of things. One, it marks it, of course. And the other is that as I cut it with the um, grinder, the cutoff wheel, it'll keep stray fibers from opening up and turning into a bloody mess. So I have to sort of guess where my thumb was, wrap this around a few times, and cut it off in the middle of that. Now, for those of you who are more familiar with cutting and dealing with wire rope than I am, these may not be the best techniques, but it's going to work just fine for me. All right then, now well that cut quite neatly, I'm very pleased with that. Okay, so for those of you who may not be familiar with how an eyelet goes on wire rope, basically the eyelet is just a little um, uh, thimble type of thing that uh, eases the strain around whatever you're attaching to, and the swage is what actually crimps the cable. Now this is just a piece of metal um, that can be crimped tight around the cable after it's gone through. Anyway, I'll show you all about it. But the thing that you need to know, which I didn't know in my local chandlery pointed out to me, is that when you use a swage with stainless steel, you have to use a copper swage, not the much more common aluminum swage. You might say, well, this isn't copper, but it is. It's actually copper that's been tinned, um, making it uh, not a dielectric a corrosion issue with aluminum and stainless which would be not too good and believe me in the Land Rover world I'm aware of that. Okay so now the trick here well here there's a few steps to this I'm gonna put a piece of shrink tube on first because when it's all said and done I'm gonna shrink the end of the folded over wire so that there's no chance of all of it ever catching on anything so the next stage is to put one side of the swage on and with the tape on here this gets to be a bit tight but it can be done Slide that on there, excellent. Then, before we put the thimble on, I actually return back through the swage, and it's a little bit harder going back, so it's easy if you take lots of extra room here. And then, start to tighten it up again, and there's one more step. Because I can't swage these here, I don't have the special crimping tool, I'm gonna to go back to my chandlery with all the cables made up and have them crimp them all at once. I'm holding them temporarily with just a little hose clamp. And that'll mean that, that as I turn up my chandelier, the cables are ready and easy to crimp really quick. It would have been easier if I put this on in advance. By the way, if you're working with hose clamps, make sure you work with a nut driver and don't try to use a regular screwdriver in there. Drive you nuts, especially in an awkward spot. Okay, so now the thimble and the swage can be tightened up. In theory, I should put this on the screw so that I know the exact length but really exact is not that crucial in this I can tell it's going to be very 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 close I'm going to tighten that up just a bit and start to tighten this when I lived in Lunenburg Nova Scotia I knew a, uh, a rigger that spent all his days splicing wire rope much heavier than this stuff and his hands were just unbelievable. Now the other thing I really need to do is mark these cables so as I start to pull them through I don't get all frustrated because I got the wrong one in the wrong place. I want to nail it the first time. I love it, love it, love it. And just back from my local chandlery, and I've had all the crimps done on these swages. If I bring that a little closer to you, perhaps you can see that this is quite beautifully crimped, and um, I'm really, really grateful for that. So now I'm just going to take off all these hose clamps and shrink the shrink tube. 
Um, I'm pretty sure I won't make you watch too much of this. Are you still watching? Sorry about that. All right, folks, what do we have here? A little something from... That's a strange... Anyway, here we go. Okay, as I suspected, these are the two AWOL sprockets um, that I need to finish up at the helm. These are probably covered with grease in here, but I do want to dig them out because I just want to see them. There we go. That is the smallest diameter sprocket you can get to fit on a one inch shaft and with that um, number 50 chain you see what they do they actually shave down the boss a little bit so the chain can fit in there anyway I wanted the very smallest one to get my um, steering geometry right that it was about two and a half turns lock to lock if you've been following along you know all about that now sadly I shouldn't say sadly these are steel and yes they're not bronze which is what they're replacing but I think if I keep them lubricated and in good shape they're inside after all they'll do just fine let's get them on okay so it's time to change out the sprocket for this massive bronze one to this itty bitty little steel one and this is really straightforward this um, steering shaft doesn't actually run on any bearings or bushings of any sort it's basically just bronze on bronze with a little oil hole where you can put a little oil in here and I mean it's in pretty good shape considering it's oh gosh it's pretty old now um, really really like it it's it's one of those things again that's perpetually repairable and that's what I like so these are just beautiful little oh I just love them and then this just lifts out isn't that nice oh it's loose all right well, let's take it over to the bench otherwise known as my kitchen counter and uh, see what we can do with it so here we go let's tidy this up just a little bit so I don't get too greasy doing this and uh, we'll take this sprocket off which is held on by a key bolt here which can't be very tight and uh, of course there'll be a, a keyway as well and off it comes beautiful isn't that freaking gorgeous okay so there is the shaft with the key now all I need to do at this point is get the new sprocket on because the new sprocket is not as um, deep or in other words the boss isn't as deep as the old one and I don't want there to be play so I bought myself some nice big washers but we'll deal with that when we put it back into the helm um, bracket there this is just just lovely so okay so basically on line up the key just so gorgeous now I'm just gonna snug this up enough that it stays put but the final tightening will be done when it's does the final alignment oh I love this thing okay let's get it on okay so that sits in there and as you can see right now I have at least one washer worth of play and I know that when I set up the chain I set it up close to this edge but it can't be as close as that because otherwise it's going to hit the chain because the chain the shoulder sits off that let's rock a little bit so at least one washer has to go on the outside beautiful okay well hello and welcome to beer of the week this is a really really great treat for me as well as for you this is one of my favorite little Victoria microbreweries Twa Dogs and what I believe is their flagship beverage, Mistress of My Soul Saison. This is an amazing outdoor summer beverage. It's a gorgeous day today. It's a little bit early for a beer, but it's just such a nice day. I can't resist a little outdoor sunshine because there may not be sunshine when it comes to beer drinking time. I have chilled the glass. I have chilled the bottle because we've had some pouring trouble on the show lately and I want to make sure that this pours beautifully. Okay, I think this is very promising. This is a really lovely beer. It's not really strong, it's not really full, but the flavors it has are really delicate and really, really subtle. I just love it, love it. Mmm, again. Oh, gotta finish this up on the bridge deck. A little bit of citrus going on there, but not overpowering. Absolutely brilliant. If you have a chance, do please try it. Want to thank? Um, really had a banner week for patrons. Thank you so much to Cullen Bryant, Paul Luddington, Natalie Smith, and Jack Gates. Thank you all for coming aboard. I'm really, really grateful. Cheers. And also, as some of you may know, I opened up an Amazon wish list last week, and couldn't, wouldn't you know it, a pile of stuff arrived. A whole schwack of my favorite Klein screwdrivers. 
paintbrushes, some quality paintbrushes here. And these came in from Edward Selenus. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Thank you ever so much, Edward. And uh, these are definitely going to be helpful with carrying on with the project. And for those of you who would love to win a Travels of Jordy t-shirt, the word of the week is perseverance. Perseverance. Sorry, it seems to apply, but I realize it's hard to spell. I'm not sure I even know how to spell it. So, if you'd like to win a t-shirt, put the word perseverance in a comment down below. And over the course of the next 24 hours, I will pick one of the comments at random and send you off a Travels with Jody t-shirt. Thanks a lot and cheers. And see you tomorrow. Did I say tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow, because this bloody steering project is taking forever. Not really in real time, there's only three or four days work in it really, but the episodes seem to be dragging on and I apologize for that. So to nail it down, I'm going to pound out the next three episodes in three days. So tomorrow there'll be an episode, Sunday there'll be an episode, and not to worry for my patrons, I'll not bill for the Sunday episode so that we're not getting anyone overwhelmed. But we'll be done with the steering on Sunday. Cheers, two bonus episodes, see you tomorrow.